What we're simulating at the moment is, for example, a tall building where we have a large amount of mass at the top uh, with the large length of the rod that makes a very flexible or tall building. And I'm going to apply some small shaking at the base and we see that actually we can start to generate quite large displacements. And if I vibrate the base at the same frequency as the frequency of this building, then I can really generate significant displacements. If I now apply a much higher frequency or shorter vibration period, I actually generate very little movement of that building. But now, if I shift these masses downwards to simulate a much shorter building, this natural property of the building is a higher frequency. Therefore, if I apply that long displacement, you see essentially no displacement of the masses. It basically moves rigidly with the base. Whereas then if I find the natural frequency uh, at a much higher value, you can see actually a large displacement occurs at that frequency. And so this is a phenomena of resonance where if the shaking frequency is the same as the building frequency, it actually causes large displacements. In the particular case of the Kaikoura earthquake in Wellington, because of the large distance, approximately 60 kilometres, a lot of that short period uh, shaking energy had been attenuated, whereas the long period shaking energy hadn't, and so it imposed much larger demands on tall buildings than it did on short buildings. That brings a lot of challenges because, of course, we have these earthquake-prone buildings, which are often uh, sort of one- or two-storey masonry buildings in New Zealand. In this particular case, they weren't damaged because the shaking was quite small for those short-period buildings, whereas in an earthquake that was located much closer to Wellington, we do still expect those buildings to have significant damage. If we take, for example, uh, Wellington City and the Thorndon Basin area, and we have a large number of tall buildings located on Lambton Quay uh, and um, further up onto the rock, then they'll be subjected to very different shaking than as you move closer to the waterfront. And in particular, that depth of soil deposits at the waterfront is on the order of about 50 to 100 metres. And as the seismic waves propagate through those soils, it changes the properties of the seismic waves quite significantly. And so we saw buildings on the waterfront sustain significantly more damage than what we did buildings located uh, further up on rock conditions. So there are certain construction technologies such as precast uh, concrete flooring in New Zealand which were used extensively in the, the 70s, 80s and 90s. Currently there's a large emphasis to try and understand in detail the performance uh, of precast concrete buildings with uh, hollow core floors and with double T flooring units in particular. So we're here at the Structural Earthquake Laboratory at the University of Canterbury and what I have behind me is a, a full-scale representation of a typical uh, building in a sort of 80s to 90s era uh, reinforced concrete construction. Uh, this is the type of uh, structural form that we have, for example, in the statistics house. Uh, we're trying to understand how the deformation of the floors interacts with the beams and columns that support that floor to make sure that under large earthquakes when the building deforms, that those floors don't unseat from the beams and collapse onto the floors below. In the Kaikoura earthquake, then Wellington City, uh, buildings like the Statistics House and the BNZ Centre uh, did perform poorly. Uh, there's other buildings that are suspected that in a future earthquake they may perform poorly, such as the Wellington Library. Um, but the other way to think about it as well is that by focusing on how infrastructure performs in extreme events like earthquakes, we actually also improve the performance of that infrastructure on a daily basis. Out of uh, sometimes these problems comes many opportunities and so New Zealand really is leading the world in terms of making advances in these precast concrete uh, techniques and how to make them seismically safe.